Spawning down in the bottom left hand position of map 2 of this best of 3 as the blue Zerg player. It's Zafenia. And in the top right, the Red Terran. One game up in this best of three so far, Haida. It's the quarterfinals of the ESL Play Starbo Tournament number six. I'm Maddles. If you've missed any games, do not fear. All the vods will be on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Maddles91. If you're just tuning into the stream though, that's awesome because stream's where it's at. Make sure you follow the stream. And if you're watching the vods, check out the stream because it's sweet. For the moment though, Safenia going for a little extractor trick there to go 11 out of 10. I like to consider going like for an extractor trick. The equivalent of, I'm trying to think of a sporting equivalent to it. I like to think of it something like, maybe doing a slam dunk in basketball. I think that's quite a good analogy. Like, it's not necessary, right? You could, you could just palm it in. It'd still work. But slam dunking it is just like, yeah! <sighs> Getting it good. I can't even imagine, like, if... I was gonna say if Wolverine played StarCraft 2, he would do extractor tricks. But I just can't really imagine Wolverine playing StarCraft 2. I imagine more that he'd just get angry when he got cannon rushed on ladder, and his, like, claws would just go through the keyboard, and... Like, QX... If Wolverine played, QXE's famous keyboard smash would be so much less impressive compared to, like, Wolverine just be like, STAB! Good times. Anyway, for the moment, Reaper's gonna be opening again from Hyder. Getting down that barracks. Did some good damage with it. Unable to take down a hatchery anytime soon, but still, things looking fairly good. Hatchery is there for Zafenia. And spawning pool. Gas also coming down, so everything fairly cool at the moment. This is just a very normal opening at the moment. As I said in the previous map, I haven't seen many Terran games played, so. If the three races in Starbo, it's the one I'm least familiar with currently. Factory, calming down following this up, so it's not going to be the same opening that we saw in the previous game. Uh, not going to be Mass Reapers, there is still a Reaper coming down, but we're not seeing the Elite Reaper upgrade as of yet. Factory, could be used for various things, so I won't see what exactly comes down from there. Meanwhile, over on Zafenia's side, four Zerglings just getting out for a defensive basis. Couple of drones and gas, just going up to that 100 gas mark in order to get Zergling speed down. Gonna aid in the defense there. One Reaper, now out on the field, gonna be making its way forward, just looking to do a little bit of poking. Maybe force an overreaction from Zafenia to really seeing that single Reaper, expecting that same opening that we saw last time. Factory should switch over to get onto the tech lab anyway. With the tech lab down, um, I'm not quite sure what this factory can actually pump out. Uh, should be able to pump out tanks. Um, that much is for sure. Uh, could also go for some vultures. Now, vultures do have some cool things. There's a couple of cool upgrades for them on the tech labs too, but we'll look at those in a second for the moment. That Reaper just getting a little bit of damage. Gonna back away so the combat drugs can heal it up nice and quick. And let's still keep trying to poke. It's gonna go down though, not really what would have been wanted. First vulture is being produced. Overcharge being used to increase factory production by 50%. Ion Thrust is coming down, so increase the movement speed of Vultures. There's also Spider Mines for Vultures, which increases their damage. Oh, allows them to plant Spider Mines. Spider Mines are so sweet. They come down, and then there's a huge amount of damage coming through. All in all, this is looking pretty sweet. Things going quite nice. A good number of Zerglings making their way forward. Just going to check to see if there's an expansion. Going to find that SEV. Going to be able to take it down very fast. But, yeah. Still just more Vultures coming through. Vultures deal concussive damage, so bonus damage up against light units, or full damage, should I say. It's something I've got to get my head around in Starbo, compared to StarCraft 2, is that you don't deal with bonus damage to a certain armor type, but you deal reduced damage to other ones. So Vultures deal 100% of their damage up against light units, so full 20 damage per hit, whereas up against medium and armored units, they deal reduced 75 and 25%. Now, for the moment, this is looking all nice and good. Expansion should be coming out from Hyder fairly soon. These four vultures are going to come on a little bit of a rampage, going to try and deal some damage. This spine crawler will be adequate at pushing it back. Of course, the Zergling is going to take a huge amount of a beating from these vultures at 20 damage per hit. Only, therefore, would take two hits to actually kill Zerglings, which is never going to be too fun. Um, so, it's something to be very cautious about here. Starbo, unlike StarCraft 2, doesn't have intelligent... Um, AI for attacking, so four vultures could all attack the same Zergling, and that same Zergling 
would get overkilled massively. Unlike in StarCraft 2 where it would realize that it was going to kill it and then the other ones would attack something else. So that makes a little bit more micro potential available. Spider mines being researched. Spider mines are really cool. Spider mines drop down a couple of, uh, a single spider mine. And then if anything gets near, unburrows, flies towards it and deals 125 damage to a large area. One Banshee now, starting to chip away here, add a couple of drones, just dealing some nice damage. There is a Spire coming down, but it gets scouted. With Cloak, these Banshee, gonna be fairly effective. The second one also making its way across. Cloak doesn't last for too long, there's no energy on Banshee, like there is in StarCraft 2. Um, just lasts for 6 seconds, so it's a bit of a more micro dense thing to try and get away. That Enraged Queen is gonna get the kill, very nice. First few spider mines now coming down. We've got a decent number of them. Remember, they unburrow, deal 125 damage to armored, less to medium and light, but still huge amounts of damage. So keeping a good eye on here. The vultures do some nice damage. There's the spider mines now detonating. We're seeing a bit of their intelligent attacks there. Unfortunately, detonating on the wrong thing. Those spider mines reburrowing up after they were unneeded since everything died. The Banshee's still trying to rack up a couple more kills. Zafinia getting a little bit behind in the work account. 22 up against 30 SCVs. And the natural base not even really coming into play as of yet. That Orbit Command morphing in. No mules though in Starbo. Instead, you can cool down SCVs, which is fairly awesome. There's also, of course, Overcharge and Scanner Sweep. These spider mines still looking threatening, but it's a circling counterattack that could be a problem right now for Hyder. A tank is there. One lone vulture doing its utmost to try and stop this, but the tank dies. A lot of SCVs could go down now. The vultures get taken out, but more are returning. Already, though, nice damage being done. If you look at the workers killed, Safinia managing to kill five for the moment. Viking though, just coming back. The cool Viking skin, of course, makes them look so damn sweet. Oh. More damage being done, just looking fairly comfortable. 28 to 24 workers, so that Zergling run by was able to level things out slightly there. Vikings gonna be helping up against the Mutalists, especially when this is predominantly a mech style play. Some Goliath may also be utilized, um, but the interesting thing about Vikings is they're not super good against high numbers of Mutalists. The only real thing Terrans have in their arsenal to deal with a large group of Mutalisks are science vessels and a radiator. So for the moment, not too much coming down from Zafinia. Hasbro Lair could upgrade that Hydrogen into a Lurker Den just to go for a little bit of pushing, but probably not since the Mutalisks are already down, at least not urgently. They may be coming down at some time soon, but for the moment, it's just getting more Vikings out, getting more Goliath out, getting ready to deal with those mutas as they come across. The problem that stands for Zafinia at the moment is two hatches, no third as of yet, and only 31 drones. That income doesn't really facilitate too much, although having said that, it's actually more the lava count that is acting as the stumbling block there. Because if we take a look, over a thousand minerals banked up despite the relatively low income. We do now have uh, the Charon Boosters, which increases the attack range of Goliath's missiles by three, making them a lot more effective in dealing with Mutalisks. Mutalisks, only four of them on the field, are just chilling around, having a bit of a fun time for the moment. Meanwhile, a few more just getting added into the mix. We've got a decent Viking count, three already down, more gonna be produced constantly. The Goliath count also sitting up at two uh, with more in production, so they're gonna start working away. No attack upgrades for Hyda as of yet, but Zafinia still with the plus one attack there, and also getting plus one flyer attack. Quite normal in Starbo to see less upgrades just because they take so long. 240 seconds to actually come down, and that can be an awful long time. In come the Mutalisks now though, and while it may not look like many, there are 10 there, so they're going to be making their way forward. Could try and focus down a missile target fairly quick, but the Vikings sitting in a nice spot, going to start aiming to do that. The cool thing about Vikings is they deal 25% splash damage to air units. So up against clumped up Mutalisks, that is a huge amount of damage that can be coming down. We've got more meters also coming through at the moment. Um, really pumping out a lot of Mutalisks consistently. We've got finally some mech upgrades on the way out for Hyder. Plus one mech attack. These vultures going to try and deal a little bit of damage. Trying to pick away at a couple of drones. Dealing that 20 damage per hit to drones is really nice. It means that with two hits you kill a drone quite nicely. Um, since drones have no armor. Worthwhile noting. Only um, 
Really Mutalisk's tech coming down for the moment for Zafinia. Not much else in the way of additional upgrades or too much else coming down. Also getting supply block. Another overall coming through now, but it's a little bit frustrating. This Vulture desperately trying to work down a hatchery, but of course since it's armoured, it only takes 25% of the damage. Oh, sorry, 50% of the damage. No, tw wow, 25% of the damage from Vultures, so only 5 damage per hit. Takes a long time. These Mutalisks attempting to work through this SCV line. The missile tried seeing some nice damage, but by clumping up these Mutalisks, able to get them away, he needs to keep them out of range at the moment, but not too much there. Tanks as well, in a bit of a tough spot. Meanwhile, a counter push coming in. The Vikings landing now, starting to chip through everything. Vultures making short work of those drones. The rest of the Vikings, though, have made their way back. They're taking out those Mutalisks incredibly quickly. Hyder now up in supply, 77 to 62. And this is all going nice. So Vikings just getting some really, really good damage going down. But it's the drone count that's going to be hurting Zafinia. Even though it's 39 to 40, quite a lot of drones have been taken down. 18 so far killed by Zafinia with that mutilist one by only 10 actually from Hyder. I thought it would have been more than that. So all in all... Just keeping a closer eye on everything that is occurring for the moment. These Vikings landing now, going for a little stealth attack towards the fourth base. More drones are now dying. Vikings landed, deal 12 damage per hit. Uh, obviously flying Vikings deal more damage, uh, 16 damage off across two hits. A couple of spore callers gave some nice damage, the Vikings fairly tanky. These overlords getting taken down fairly quick. It's frustrating, but not going to act as a supply block. But it's these tanks getting in. Tanks do 70 damage per hit when sieged. Vikings landing as well. Going to take out a lot of these drones making their way through. Quite a lot of them getting taken out ultra fast there. This is now looking a bit more dominating. Hydra's though from the back. Going to try and take out these tanks, but such massive splash damage. Two tanks go down, but a lot of Hydra's getting exceptionally low. The Vikings aiding that take out. A couple more Vikings coming down here. Hoping the Hydra can finish off those tanks though, and well, with no focus fire, this allowing things to be done very, very fast. The hatchery is going to die. That's taken now exceptionally quickly. And now there's only this third base, or what was the fourth. If that gets taken out too, Zavinia will be running the sleep It's The Vikings really dominating the air. So much so that no more Mutalisks being produced at the moment. But it's the fact that they keep landing too. It's getting some really nice damage done. That Enraged Queen is going to do anything and everything. It can just to get some form of defense going, but Zafinia getting fairly low on that army supply. 40 to 31. A couple of Hydras intercepting reinforcements as they come across. And as long as you intercept the reinforcements, you can get some nice damage done. But it's the Vikings up in the main, picking up anything that comes through. A couple of Hydras are there, drones even being brought in to try and fight here, which isn't the greatest thing. One score caller getting some nice damage done to these Vikings. Gonna be able to take them out with the Enraged Queen and the Hydras there. Those Vikings dying, and that's because most of Hydra's attention is looking at the push coming in through his natural base. The double supply depot warlock buying some time. The tank getting some nice damage down. The Goliath trying to work through here too, but it's the SCVs dying that's gonna be of a concern to Hydra. He may have killed 33 SCVs. Oh, drones, and he's lost 29 SCVs. Pairing up that tank ultra quick. Work account still 40 to 30 in Hyder's favor, who does now have that third base secured. But a fourth is being taken in the very top left of the map at the moment, down by Zafinia. Just keeping a close eye on everything going, but Zafinia staying in this game. Not in the most comfortable spot, I'm going to be honest there, but still battling pretty safely, doing the utmost to try and keep things going, trying to keep things pumping out and dealing some more damage, but... For the moment, this is all looking relatively normal. Um, other than really Hyder getting into a nice spot, there's still options for Zafinia. Zafinia may look to go up to Hive relatively soon. Rebuilding that Hydra den after losing it's annoying. Could also try and get down uh, a good little move in the way of a couple of Lurkers or a Lurker den on its way to just to help deal with stuff. But Lurkers aren't going to be that effective against the mech composition. And that's the challenge that really Zafinia's got to deal with. There are still three spider mines about. They, of course, deal lots of damage to anything that may come through. But for the most part, nice defense position. Putting tanks up on the high ground here is really the best place you can have them because, therefore, any Hydras or any units attacking up onto them only have a 50% hit chance. Makes the tanks a lot more durable. 
Other than that, seven now eight mutalisks in production, joining the nine already down. The Vikings can have a bit more of a tough time dealing with those since there is only one left and this is it. Viking production restarted. Dropship down on the map, allowing these vultures to come in towards this fourth base. Picking apart at some of these drones. This is where we're really seeing a lot of attacks start coming in. Long multitasking coming through. But otherwise, not too much um, really going on for the moment. Just safe, steady play, and everything looking quite fun. Zafina bringing back, actually up now in supply. Still down though in the work account, 50 to 36. That's something which you need to be very cautious about with how it all goes through because you don't want to be taking too much additional damage if you can avoid it. Um, so, yeah, equal work account, equal supplies, but the work account's obviously the favorite hide is still. Decent for missile targets here, getting some good damage down, but with the Vikings getting a few shots off, dealing that splash damage to air, that's going really nice. As we need to keep going though, these Vikings need to be very cautious. If they go down before they start reaching the critical mass, it could be problematic. The Mutalist is able to juke up against those missile turrets. Um, just got to be very cautious about how it's all coming down for the moment. The Mutalist count sitting quite comfortably up at 14. Able to start going against these Vikings. Now these tanks completely exposed. The SCV line going to be taking some big damage too. There's only one Viking, five Goliath down. But are the Goliaths going to be able to do too much else? As it goes, more damage still on its way through. Of course, science vessels can be made since there is the fusion core. But for the moment, we're not seeing any get pumped out, just more and more Vikings, which is quite interesting. Just the reactor on there, no tech lab as of yet. One lone tank and one lone Goliath getting ready to start trying to take out additional expansions as they get taken. The top left base though, I believe is unaware. Uh, oh no, Hyder has seen that there's creep sped up there, so he should be aware that there is a base coming down. We're now 23 minutes into this game, 24 now, so we are getting into a lot more of the later stages. Uh, we've also got the Viper's Nest being added in. Vipers, of course, a bit de oh, very similar to what we see in StarCraft, except um, not quite filling the same role as they do. There's a lot of other spellcasters. The Fighters critically are the big addition to the Zerg forces, aside from the Lurkers. And they can be very nice. They can be very, very nice. Whereas Blinding Cloud and Duck kind of stop damage coming out. Defilers can use Plague, which does some good damage, kind of like Fungal Growth, but just without the root. But then there's also the fact that they have, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, I can't now, but um, Defilers also have another ability, which, uh, oh, no, wait, wait, something. I can't, okay, I can't remember what it is. I hope they make some Defilers I can remember, but basically it means that ranged units can't do any damage to anything within that cloud. Um, Someone in chat will remind me at some point. But now Hyder starting to move forward. His army supply is down a little bit on Zephenius. Uh, got to be a bit careful. Um, just because Zephenius has got a decent amount out. The Mutalist count up at 14. is facing off against 9 Vikings. They can deal some nice damage. Especially with the Goliath there too. Goliath up against ground arms is good. Only deal 14 damage per hit. Um, so just got to be careful. It's the tanks that are real big damage. There's a couple of SCVs there. Healing up quite comfortably. We've got a small group of Hydralisks heading up the right. Going to try and get some more damage down as best as possible. All in all, we are still going. Vikings now getting some good shots off. That splash damage really starting to add up. The Goliath taking out a few overlords as they come. Slowly edging forward. This Hydra counter attack is doing a lot of damage. It's going to be able to take down this tank fairly easily. A spider mine is in position, but it's not yet burrowed. Will now burrow up. Needs to get a great little detonation down, if at all possible. Not triggering for the moment, though. Still damage coming in from Hydra. Athenia, 125 supply, 2, just 94. A tank up on the high ground. As long as these repairs keep coming down, the Hydra is going to take significant amounts of damage. But the supply depot will fall. And therefore, the tank will go down too. This is more problematic. Hyder very well may need to bring his forces back in order to come and defend this. So are there is only a small group of Hydralisks here, and most of them are incredibly low on health. They can still dish out a decent amount of damage. Vulture's trying to get some more damage down at the moment, just slowly picking away at this, but Hyder down to just 33 SCVs at this stage. And with so low and such a low SCV count and only on these three bases, he's in some trouble because there's four bases for the Zerg and Zephenia actually bringing it back. 
slowly, slowly working his way into this game again. And he's actually, arguably now, a little ahead, he's up in the work account. The only thing he's actually currently missing, as far as I can see, is some form of tech. Abduct is another cool thing that has to be researched now in Starbuck, rather than in Starcraft 2. Let's get it down, but small engagement coming down here now. And this is actually a lot of units for Zephenia, pushing out, taking a lot of hits against this mech. The Goliath count, only a three. The eight Vikings, chilling back, ready to deal with the Mutalisk. And the Mutalisk count is pretty damn high, 11 of them down at the moment. Hive now getting started. Glad to see that down on the field. But for the moment, this is getting some fairly cool things. And someone in this Twitch chat has this money. Dark Swarm is the word I was thinking of. Dark Swarm is like the opposite of Blinding Cloud. Rather than stopping things from dealing, magic dealing damage uh, in the Blinding Cloud, if you put Dark Swarm down, it prevents anything from taking damage within there. So in now come these Hydralists. They're going to be edging their way forward up against this tank line. A lot of supply advantage for Zephenia at the moment. Hyder having a bit of trouble holding this. The tanks on the high ground dealing some good damage, but the Hydralists making their way through. Vikings landing, just trying to get more damage done. Tank on the high ground, able to start chipping away. But now the Mutalisks can go pretty much uncontended. A couple of good Viking hits trying to work through them at the moment. And while the splash damage is nice, is it going to be enough? The Mutalisk count getting destroyed very quickly because of no focus fire. The Mutalisks are going to get taken down. Only four Hydras remain. But Zephenia still up by about 30 on supply. Nice position to be in. With the Hive now done too. But upgrades slipping slowly into favour of Hyder. So Hyder's SCV count is really low. 37 to 44 drones. He still hasn't tried to do anything to deal with his top left hand base. And the Ultralist Cavern is now coming down for Zephenia too. That Ultralist Cavern could be highly important the longer this game goes on. Because... You need some high-tech units. Uh, you need high-tech if you're going to be coming through and breaking late-game tone. But the reason they've been able to stay for 30 minutes-ish, or this 30-minute game, on pretty much mid-game tech is simply because neither player's been able to get up to much supply. They've both been kind of hovering around this kind of 100 supply mark, give or take a bit, for the majority of the game. And that's kind of the credit to Starbo, the way it encourages this active aggression. And it's where we're seeing so much come through. The Great Aspire also being researched now. So we're going full on Hive Tech now by Zephenia. Meanwhile, Hyda going to have to be contending with a little bit more damage. Planetary Fortress is only attack now activated. You have to activate the cannon for them to do any damage. And it only lasts for 30 seconds too. So something you do have to be a little bit selective with using. And gain enhancing the micro potential coming through. Tanks and Goliath making their way for towards this fourth base. Wanting to secure this. And this fourth base is so essential, since the natural is nearly mined out and the main is completely mined out, you've got to keep it up. And this old command actually is the main base of Hyder just floated down there. Now, a good number of Vikings there. We've got a decent Mutalist flock. Uh, the Viking count isn't extraordinarily high, only three of them on the field, but with the splash damage can start working through. Ten Ultralisks, though, are in production. They take two seconds less to produce compared to Starcraft 2. Um, not that that makes much of a difference. Still though, these Vikings just looking to trade. Kind of bait back these new listings to missile turrets and Goliath. Going to be successful in getting one of them. And of course that's nice. Anything you can pick off there. Resources lost, very similar. 23,000 on both sides. This is such an even game uh, for the most part. But Zephenia now going hugely up in supply. Getting the Defile amount down too. So might be able to use those Dark Swarms just to get a bit more damage a uh, bit more damage reduction through especially allowing the ultralists to close up the distance um there is of course anabolic synthesis as an upgrade that gives ultralists increased movement speed which is terrifying and brilliant at the same time uh other than that not too much going down just a lot of ultras here uh we're about to see their speed upgrade kick in there we go ultra should not move that first that is terrifying otherwise this is looking very much like zafini's game at the moment 100 supply up gotta be very very careful now as Hyder. Hyder has to have the most incredible trade. Getting down a Radiate and his first science vessel. And I'm so glad to see that because that was really his only option to deal with these mutalists once they start getting into more sizable numbers. But it may be too late. Hyder has got to put up a monumental defense. And while he's got a decent amount of missile turrets up here, there's nothing for the ground bar that planetary fortress. 
this force can just move in there and take it down pretty quick. We've also got a split in the force now, coming down towards this fourth base, which is going to be a bit harder to assault with all the tanks there. But now, in we go. Zafinia ready to get some nice damage. Repairs coming down on the planet's fortress, but its attack has not yet been activated, so it's just chilling there, watching all of this damage come through. GG called, and Zafinia levels out this best of three to tie it 1-1.